Did you know you can create a view model for your NativeScript pages without using a class? In this video, I'm going to show you how to do that. Hi everybody, this is Alex from nativescripting.com. Do you want to take your NativeScript skills to the next level? Check out the advanced NativeScript courses by several experts in the NativeScript field on nativescripting.com. A link and a discount code is down below in the description. And if you enjoy my NativeScript tutorials here on YouTube, please consider subscribing to this channel and click the little bell so you don't miss anything. All right, so the NativeScript docs sometimes use the from object function when demonstrating how to create a view model for a page. This may be a bit confusing to some of those that are new to NativeScript because you usually see the hello world template, which uses a class that inherits from observable. So what is this from object function and why is there no view model file? Well, since in JavaScript, an instance of a class is an object and a plain old JavaScript object is also an object, they can both be used as a basis for a view model for a page. But the key is that they both have to be observable. In case we're using a class, we can just inherit from NativeScript's own observable class. But if we want to use a plain old JavaScript object, we have to use the from object function to create an observable from it. All right, let's have a look. So here we are in a brand new project starting from scratch again. You're all probably familiar with this tab application where you tap the button and the counter decrements. And right now, this is using the main view model as a class that extends observable and all our logic for the counter, the message that we're seeing, the tap handler is all right in here in this class. This is the main page, which is the code behind for the XML that contains our markup. I'm just gonna delete everything here to clean this up. And we are creating a new hello world model here for our pages binding context, which means that we're using MVVM here as our pattern and hello world model is our view model, which is an observable. The documentation sometimes doesn't do that. Sometimes the documentation just creates inline view model right here by using the from object function, which is also part of that observable module. It got auto imported from core modules data observable. And here we just pass in a new object. This is a shorthand, so you don't have to even have another class. We're going to delete that class momentarily. But for now, let's copy all the functionality from that class. So this still works the same way. The class has a public getter and setter for the message property. So we're going to create that message property right here. And I'm going to initialize that to 42 taps left. Okay, we also need some kind of private counter variable. So let's do that counter. I'm going to set that to 42. What else are we doing here? All right, so here's our on tap handler that's important. And then the update message handler. I'm just going to copy both of these and paste them in here. There we go. I just need to comma separate these and get rid of the private modifier. We're almost done here. So here on tap, we're actually providing a function It's going to decrement the counter and update the message. Here's our update message function. We're checking the counter here, this dot message. So here we're setting this dot message, but it's actually not notifying the observable. We need to use a different function here that's part of the observable class that's going to notify the observable. I'll leave this alone for now so you can see that it's not going to work and then we'll fix it in a second. So what is really this from object anyway? Well, as you can see, it returns turns an observable. So our binding context has to be an observable no matter what. In the template case, we're creating a class that extends observable. In this case, when we're using from object, we're just creating an observable right away from an object, from a JavaScript object. All right, so at this point, I'm just gonna delete main view model. I'll delete that TypeScript file and then the JavaScript file, boom, gone. Okay, and now I'll save this main page.ts file and let's see what happens here. Our app restarts. Actually, we have a little problem here. I need to delete this line too because there is no file there anymore. So so let's delete that. Okay, now the app restarts and there we go, that's working. However, I would recommend that you even use the set method here to ensure that the UI will be notified of any changes. So this dot set and then the property that we're gonna set, which is message and then the value, okay? And that yields us the result that we want. So essentially we can just have this object hanging out somewhere around here. So we can call this a VM and there's our object and then i can just set the binding context from object and then pass in the vm to make this line a little bit cleaner at least 
How about you? Have you used the from object function to create your observables for your view models? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this tip, please subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of the awesome tutorials we've got coming up. Also, you can find me on Twitter. I'm at Digitalix over there. I tweet about random native script stuff and other stuff. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.